So this British guy accused of what a U.S. prosecutor calls the biggest military computer hack in all time will not have to face trial here in the United States at all because of fears he may kill himself. His name is Gary McKinnon. He's 46 years old. He admits, yes, I hacked into Pentagon and NASA computers. But he claims he was just looking for secret evidence of unidentified flying objects. Our studios in New York and U.S. officials, Jonathan, not at all happy about this one. Not at all, Shep. This, after all, is a man who, in their words, broke into some of the most secret U.S. military computer networks that there are. He caused, they say, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage, and they very much wanted to get him back here to face American justice. Let's back to the most interesting matter at hand. What did he find in the way of UFO evidence? Well, he says he spent a year looking through these uh, computer systems, and he found, he says, photographic evidence of uh, photographic proof of alien spacecraft and the names and ranks of something he called non-terrestrial officers. He has not at this point shared those names with us. What is that? Here it comes back. What that is. Now it's staying still. Change direction again. Stop. Change direction again. What in God's name is that? Yeah, you can see the... If we're supposed to take me home now, I'm not safe here. Holy crap. 
So the trees coming. are covering them. They can point over there so they can see that it's not just... It's a regular sky. And then on... Wait, there's trees. So let's go back to regular sky. Regular sky, chill, chill. UFO sky. Oh, and it's just over there, huh? Yeah, it's just right there. Nah, but when we were coming in the what mountains, it yeah, was white. Like, it was white and foggy. Like, I wasn't paying attention that when she saw like ocean in the mountains, and that was a white one. Not foggy. just outside this city. Over the town of Waldorf, Maryland, dozens of witnesses reported an incredible scene. Multiple jet fighters chasing multiple large unknown objects that were of blue and orange coloration. All the witnesses, two of whom I interviewed personally and several of whom spoke to national media, described the amazing performance and capability of these objects. The Air Force itself admitted that it had scrambled F-16s to investigate unknowns, which it had also admitted it had tracked on at least uh, one of these objects on radar. We also learned that the UFO simply disappeared from the radar. The Air Force conclusion was that it could have been, quote, any number of things. Many of you spot a giant ball of light. There it is, zipping through our skies tonight. Everybody has their own opinion of what the heck this glow is just flying by. A UFO, a meteor, even a plane on fire. Thanks for choosing us tonight. I'm Katie Rammel. And I'm Steve Irvin. We started getting calls on this into our newsroom shortly before 8 o'clock. Dozens of them. And we've had reports this ball of light has been seen as far away as Nevada and Colorado. So, of course, we put our crews quickly out to work to find out what exactly this is. ABC 15's Adam Slinger joins us live. And Adam, what did you find out about this? You know, we've made calls to everyone from NASA to the National Weather Service. And right now, no one seems to know exactly what it was. Now, our reporter, ABC 15's Brian McElhatton, snapped this picture for us just about two and a half hours ago. 
He says he saw two different events. Now, this is a picture of the first event. He saw this little orange dot streaking across the sky. It did not make a sound, and he says it hovered above the clouds for about 15 minutes or so before it disappeared into the atmosphere. Here's your list of charges. You hacked into the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Department of Defense, and NASA, amongst other things. Why? I was in search of suppressed technology, um, you know, laughingly referred to as UFO technology. I think it's the biggest kept secret in the world because of its comic value. Um, but it's a very important thing. We've got old age pensioners can't pay their fuel bills. Um, we've got countries being invaded um, to get award oil contracts to the West. And uh, meanwhile, secretive parts of the secret government are sitting on uh, suppressed technology for free energy. So how did you go about trying to find the stuff that you were looking for in NASA, in the Department of Defense? Well, I assume that although it's part of a secret government project, there must be military ties. Um, I'd read 400, 400 expert and witness testimonies, um, ranging from civilian air traffic controllers through military radar operators, all the way up to guys that were in charge of whether or not to launch nuclear missiles. So it's a very credible people. Uh, all of these people had said uh, that there, is, there are UFOs, they are alien. Um, we're using anti-gravity and reverse engineered technology that came from captured UFO crew. We're using anti-gravity? Yeah. Okay, so how did you go about hacking into the computers to find what you were looking for? Well, unlike the press would have you believe, it wasn't very clever. Um, I searched for blank passwords. Um, I wrote a tiny Perl script, the Perl language, that tied together other people's programs that searched for blank passwords so you could scan 65,000 machines in just over eight minutes. So you so you're saying that you found computers which had a high-ranking status, administrator status, yep. which hadn't had their passwords set. They were still set to default. Yeah, precisely. And in some cases, it was thousands of machines because they had a, an image. Rather than install Windows off a CD in every machine, you blat it onto an image, stick the image in all the machines, and every single machine has a blank local administrator password. So, find inside NASA. Uh, one of these people was uh, a NASA photographic expert and she said that in Building 8 of Johnson Space Center um, they regularly airbrushed out images of UFOs from the high-res satellite imagery. And using the same blank password hunting technique, I got down to Building 8 and um, got a few blank passwording machines there. And what she said was there, was there. There was fil uh, folders called filtered and unfiltered or processed and raw, something like that. Um, I got one picture out of the folder, bearing in mind this is a 56k dial-up, uh, also in a, a NASA proprietary image format, not a GIF or a JPEG or anything. So using the remote control program, I turned the colour down to 4-bit colour, the screen resolution really, really low, and even then this picture was still, you know, juddering and coming onto the screen. But what came onto the screen was amazing, it was a culmination of all my efforts. It was a picture of something that definitely wasn't man-made. Um, it was above the Earth's hemisphere, it was kind of looked like a satellite, but it was cigar-shaped. It had um, geodesic domes above, below, to the left, to the right, and both ends of. Uh, and although it was a low-resolution picture, it was very close up. Um, this thing was hanging in space. The Earth's hemisphere was visible below it. And um, no rivets, no seams, none of the stuff associated with normal man-made manufacturing. There's a smaller one flying into it or something. Dude, it's angel circling the earth, man. Haha. <laughs> What's this coming up to it, man? No way. I got this on tape, man. Oh, this is a trip. Dude, there's one stopping right into it. It's hovering. Oh, I know. I see. Dude, this ain't even right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Dude, I got it on tape. What the hell? <laughs> That's the craziest thing ever. I'm telling you, it's the mothership being guided in this way. <laughs> Whoa! It's so bright.
Dude, it's beautiful. Oh, I got it. I'm filming it, dude. Yeah, it's it's dude. Yeah. That's important. Like a, like a refueling or something. Yeah, I don't know what just happened. Dude, we just saw something amazing. This one's coming closer over here, yeah, man. Yeah, here comes another one. You got another one coming out from further west? Yeah, man. I got it. Look at dude, dude, dude. Oh, wow. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> These tiny flashes turn Joe Kiernan from UFO skeptic to believer. Down over the top of this house here. And after he shared his story with us, others phoned his home to share their stories with him. They were just as confused, almost as if they were looking for me for answers. Those looking for answers. The first time I saw three. Include Bill Barrett. It's just beyond logic. You're watching it and you're saying, this makes no sense. But this wasn't Bill's first or even second sighting. It's his fifth. If there's something out there, or if it's a military type of situation, you know, who knows, but uh, it makes you scratch your head, that's for sure. The Mutual UFO Network says three others reported sightings that same night. Heather Richards commented on our News Channel 15 Facebook page saying, I saw one of the orange UFOs at one time as well. It was the strangest thing, but the Federal Aviation Administration's report says different because there are none. The regional FAA office says none of their pilots reported anything strange in the air that night. Char Air Force Base says that night there were no training missions along the coast. So what exactly did so many people see? And why can't any of them explain it? They are beyond logic. I don't know if they're on this, this planet, but <laughs> there's something up there floating around. It's very unexplainable to me. But with more people coming forward, it's adding suspicion of the unknown. There's a lot of people that really need to know what's going on. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what this is, but it's a light, and it's changing color, and it's flying through the sky. This is my first ever UFO. I'm fucking serious. Like, real UFO. It's like... Where'd it go? Guys, I don't know what that is, and it just keeps disappearing and reappearing. Changing color, it's getting higher in the sky. What is this? Anybody? That was me. 
Katie, sorry. It's staying pretty steady. It's higher. It's flashing, falling, blinking. Darting across the sky now. Oh God, I hope somebody else is seeing this. Please. Ugh. Blowing out and then coming back in, and then they're like waving around. And... Is that it's it's the star in the sky. Huh? Your star is in the no, look, sky. Look. I was playing with No, it's just a regular. coming down it burst yeah. into four what the four fuck of them that? after the four burst then three of them burst and came there's back together one. coming at each other now i see some look there's something blinking up there what's that blinking thing i don't know that's fucking weird helicopters don't stay steady like that
if anybody can make this out, but I definitely see something in the sky. You saw a plane pass by, and then there's there was just one more faint dot that I don't see any anymore. Now this thing is just like hovering over there, and the other dot kind of like disappeared. So I don't know what the hell this is. That's the dot, and I'm going to zoom out just so you see what's going on. I'm going to zoom back in. There's something out there. And today was the day when we felt the earthquake in New York City.